Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. This is the Matthews HDR. Now it's second hand this bow. So one of my old customers came in and traded in. And I was like, how much do I give you for it? I don't know what it's worth. No one's ever sold one. But it brought me back to the time when I used to sell these bows. And it reminds me of when Matthews said, in 2019, I think this bow was first released, this was gonna be the future of compound bows, a single can. Now obviously that didn't turn out to be the case. Um, and hence I'm doing a review on it. Now, what, what were some of the issues with this bow and why didn't this bow become a success Matthews originally envisaged it to be? It was a round wheel, so it was basically slow. It's meant to be a smooth draw, so we can compare that. It was meant to be very accurate with a bigger brace height, so we're going to test that out as well. Um, it's got dampeners, roller slide, modules to change the draw length. So, you know, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. Um, let's try drawing the bow. This is a 70 pound bow. Now, I, draw this, I drew the 70 pound on there. So, I don't know if I'm going to be able to draw this, but we'll sort of see how we go. There, now, the Omnia Elite Omnia is a speed bow. So, speed bows are generally harder to draw. This should be a slow bow, so this should be easy to draw. Now, the customers who had this bow really liked it. So some of the issues when this bow came out was the string used to touch the cam here on the inside. Look, it didn't really create any major issues. Um, Matthew's put this little plastic thing on the string to stop string wear, but it hasn't been really a problem. And these bows have been pretty bulletproof. I haven't had any returned. Well, that's 70 pounds. It's easy. And I'm not saying that because I'm getting stronger, because I don't think I am. It's just an easy draw cycle, single cam. It's so like, it's, it doesn't start peaking early, it starts peaking later in the draw cycle. So the first bit, you can sort of see it's sloppy. You can't really do that on a modern compound bow today. Then it peaks and it sort of just falls over into the valley. It's not a fast drop off, it's a fairly smooth drop off. So here it's kind of, now it's starting a peak, starting a peak, dropping, dropping, dropping into a dead stop. We're going to take a shot. It's dead in the hand. It's a nice draw cycle. So really this bow is like any modern compound bow. Machine riser, parallel limbs, it's just a different cam system to the current Matthews. It's roller slides, which is good. It's a pretty good bow. It's just not very fast. We're gonna take it outside and check the speeds of this bow. Okay, we're outside. It's a bit windy today, so we'll be shooting indoors the, um, for 18 meters to see how well we shoot with the HDR. But, um, so these are uh, Victory VIPs. They've got 140 grain points. They're a 350 spine, 70 pound bow. Look, it feels about 29 inches. Um, the draw length's a bit different, uh, the anchoring point's a bit different, but we'll, we'll just go with it. Two sixty six. Now let's put that in comparison. My target bow at sixty pound shoots faster. I think. Um, and probably a similar draw cycle. So these are the vic um, victory. These are the gold tip velocities. Uh, they weigh three twenty seven. Um, you're going to guess. I'm going to guess around two eighty six. Two nine one, so I think my target bow is faster. So this is this is the reason why the HTR really wasn't a success. The Matthews in first off envisaged to be. It just didn't have the speeds that the other bows have. Now that may or may not be an issue for you, but this bow at 70 rates against a bow which is 60 pounds. A target bow which is 60 pounds. I'm gonna say the draw cycle is pretty similar, the brake site's pretty similar, and it has similar speeds. But 60 versus 70, huge difference. The drawing feels very similar. Now let's go inside in 18 meters and see how well we shoot. Okay, so I've sighted the bow in 
And I've taken three shots. The last one was in the 10, so I'm happy to go with that. So how does the bow feel? The bow's well balanced. Now it does have a stabilizer, it does have a peep sign, it does have a whisker biscuit. Most of my reviews are done with a, sorry, it does have a drop away as opposed to a whisker biscuit, and it does have a peep sign. Then my hands are in different positions, so I don't know how that would be. Um, the bow, the grip is different. It's a Matthews grip, so you know it's kind of got a little wind down the center. That's either good or bad. It's a very different feel. Um, but the bow's well balanced, it's got a big brace height, so it should be relatively stable. Um, it's a very smooth draw, so I think I'll shoot this bow okay, so let's see how we go. The pin's very stable. Um, obviously, there's no wind indoors. The bow has very little vibration. I can't see my arrows down the other end, so. But it sounded like one hit the other arrows. But... I'll just fire one more. So when I shoot this bow, I think, well, what price point does it come in at? Now, when this bow was new, I think it was about thirteen hundred compared to the new, the new Matthews, which are probably almost double in price. So, in three years, four years, the bows have doubled in price. Right, let's go down there and have a look. Well, it's not a horrible group. I mean, besides this one, which is a bit low, the rest of the arrows are very tight together. Now, what's interesting for me is they're all on the left of the target. When I shot my three arrows before, they're all in a line, so I'm like... Now, that will be to do with my hand placement, that my hand's in my face as opposed to under my jaw here. So I'm further away, so it'd just be that. If I'm further away, it moves the arrows to the left. Um, but this bow shoots nice. It's nice, it's not fast, it's, it's a nice, comfortable bow. So where does it rate when you think about a second-hand bow? When I think about second-hand bows, I think about what other bows sell for second-hand, what compares for new. So when I compare new, I think, well, Stinger's gonna be 600. This is clearly better than a PSC Stinger. It's machine riser. Better cams, arguably. Um, roll a slide here. It's non, non draw length adjustable, so that can be an issue for someone growing. But it's a, not a bad bow. So I'm going to put it a little bit probably over a Stinger price, but not, not much more. Because then when I think about the more modern bows, I'm going to think about, I'm going to pick a PSE uh, NXT uh, with rotating modules with parallel limbs, faster cams, they're probably around the 1500 new, 1600 now maybe. So that, was, that bow's probably gonna sell for about a thousand second hand. Not a lot of them around, but around a thousand. This bow is not as good as that. So probably around the 600 is a fair price to pay for a HTR. Um, it's a, there won't be any more of them. This can design will not get reused. Um, it was kind of a bit weird when it first came out. 
But overall, you know, metal limb pockets, these little dampeners, absorb shock, not a bad little bow. I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the Matthews HDR, um, 2019 HDR, second hand now. Thanks for watching. Bye.